What's up, everybody, and welcome to my NXT review. Uh, this is the Fallout show uh, from NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day last Sunday as what is going to be the Fallout aftermath of this show as we did kick it off with uh, the commentators, uh, you know, Wade Barrett, Beth Phoenix, and Vic Joseph standing ringside talking about everything that was going to go on the show tonight, but they got cut off by Kyle O'Reilly, who was coming out for a promo Basically, um, you know, talked about he was emotional, very pissed off, and he's been disappointed in these past few days. And, that uh, you know, Cole ruined spe something special for everybody. He said, you stabbed me in the back, but despite all that, you're still my brother and whatnot. But I need you to come out here to explain yourself. Even though it's going to probably end up me punching you in the face, I want an answer. But then next thing you know, Roderick Strong comes out basically trying to uh, say that Cole only super kicked you out of emotion and that hate. But Orion says, listen, I don't give a shit, okay? You, whatever peacemaking mission you're on, I don't want to hear. I want to hear from Cole, okay? I only want to hear from him, not you. So do not get in the ring. I can't trust you anymore, okay? None of y'all. So you need to go and tell Adam Cole to get out here. But next thing you know, Finn Balor shows up then. And um, basically, um, O'Reilly says, listen, um, you know, I don't, I don't I only want to see Cole, okay? Balor said, uh, listen, you need uh, to get behind in line, all right? Because I'm here to see Adam Cole right now. So get in the back of the line right now. And Balor basically said, you know, listen. How about, you know, I didn't want to shake uh, your hand the other night, but I trusted you and everything, but you stabbed me in the back, all right? And um, basically, Strong tried to stop Balor and, uh, you know, say you need to go right now. And, you know, um, this is not um, <clears throat> this is not O'Reilly's fault and whatnot. But actually, you know, Pete Dunne and um, Lord Cannon Birch come out and attack them then. Uh, O'Reilly comes out for the save. Basically, they had a brawl in as referees and them pulled everybody um Back then after that, um, after the whole pull apart and whatnot. But next thing you know, they did go to, um, they did go to, um, William Regal then. Basically talking about the main event tonight, which of course is going to be a six man between the undisputed era of Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong and Finn Balor versus Lorcan Birch and Pete Dunne tonight. But a very good segment basically showing how Kyle O'Reilly is pissed off. Basically doesn't know, really know what to think about all this. And basically still in shock of everything that went down last Sunday. He cannot trust on everybody right now because the Undisputed Era. Well, he can't trust anybody in the Undisputed Era. And that Adam Cole betrayed him and whatnot. And that he wants answers. And that Balor, he still wants a shot at Cole after what happened. You know, him being super kicked in the face. So he can't trust anybody himself. But we then went to, um, I guess, Santos Escobar basically saying, you know, telling cross to go home that this match is not going to happen and he will do this on his time as Rigo even said also that if Santos Escobar does not show up next week for this match he will be stripped of the cruiserweight title so yeah no cross versus um Santos the nice this man is a dead man uh next thing you know we had the way come out Johnny Gargano Gargano, um, Candice Array, and Indy Hartwell, as they had missing signs for Austin Theory, which they handed out to everybody. Johnny Gargano was on commentary as um, Candice Array and Indy Hartwell went against Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon then. Uh, tag team match. They kept going to a uh, picture in picture, though, and um, I guess to the screen up top as a van was pulling up, and Gargano wanted to know who it was. Basically, he addressed his um, theory, and Hartwell is his son and daughter now for some reason, uh, but. As this match went on, uh, Gargano, Gargano ended up leaving commentary then to go in the back and look in the van for his, um, I guess for his son technically since he keeps addressing him like that, uh, Austin Theory, which they end up bringing him back out there. He was tied up and whatnot and, you know, took the bag off of his head and everything, which he was basically in his underwear. Candice Ray came, went up there to hug him also and Ember Moon ended up getting like the roll up win on the Indy Hartwell uh, for the win there, okay, so we didn't see any Dexter Loomis or anything like that, but, um, Austin Theory was saved after he got Hitman 47 last Sunday with some chloroform and whatnot, um, I'm surprised it wasn't a trap and Dexter just didn't come out and attack them then or something, I'm surprised it was that easy to save him, like, hey, there you go, we're gonna leave the bait for you, uh, you think it'd be a trap, but no, they drove him back and he was saved. Uh, they then went to a promo from Pat McAfee on a jet, which we have not seen since War Games. I heard he was taken off of TV for some reason. And, uh, basically he talked about how Adam Cole is a scumbag and that he was correct the whole time. And that the IWC needs to apologize to him, 
um, for everything they said about him and that he was right about everything. So he's going to go on vacation, you know, get a drink, get some sun and whatnot, and then he will be back at some point in time. So at least we did see Pat McAfee back in the fold since we haven't seen him in a while since War Games. Like I said, and I don't know why he was taken off a of TV for whatever I like reason it was. Uh, but next, Kushida was in the back end checked on as uh, Bronson Reed came in saying, you know, uh, listen, I want my shot at the North American title. And if it comes uh, to be, you know, has to be me and you in a match, then let it, so it be. But he's going to wait till he's he healed up and whatnot. Next thing you know, Malcolm Bivens, who was sitting in the corner uh, reading the newspaper, shows up and says, ah, Kushida, um, I got a match I need you to wrestle tonight, okay? And I got an opponent of your choosing. And, uh, he, and, you know, he asked the medical uh, trainers, hey, he's medically cleared to wrestle then, right? Yeah, I got an opponent for you tonight. Of course, it could be Tyler Russ, but Kushida is in a match tonight, though. Um, Swerve went against Leon Ruff. I still have no idea where they're going with Swerve. I'm almost surprised Leon Ruff is still getting wins out here. But um, I did like his little corkscrew RKO thing he did off the uh, top rope, though. But um, Ruff, once again, gets another lucky win, of course, on... Uh, on um swerve and whatnot uh swerve basically was pissed off then uh as he was gonna go in for a handshake and end up beating up leon ruff and saying like where's my shot the north american title um what's this guy going against jake atlas whatever happened to him now they've gone on to leon ruff for some reason so uh swerve i have no idea other than him just losing almost every other week kane carter and casey canzaro uh went against Jess jesse kamea and Aaliyah. uh good little tag match i should say of course, um, whatever, Zia Lee and Boa end up showing up on stage then after, um, what, Casey and uh, Caden won their match. Uh, Casey basically walked up to Zia Lee and basically said, listen, I'm your friend, okay? I'm just trying to help you. But Zia Lee ended up, like, writing a symbol onto, uh, what, Casey Canzaro's hand and basically says, you are going to be purged next week. So, yeah, she's a dead woman, apparently, folks. She is going to be a dead woman in this match but continuing on but other than them uh allegedly getting killed on this show last week uh well next week uh we didn't move on next to uh beth phoenix who was there to announce the winners of the dusty classic uh tournament for both men and women as um msk came out first des and wentz um basically talking about they're the winners now and that they will be going for the tag team title since they have earned a future shot for those belts um, and whatnot. So they wanted to just bask in the moment as they uh, won. And uh, next thing you know, uh, Beth called out both the women, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, as they were about to um, <clears throat> say something about them winning the tag tournament and whatnot. Next thing you know, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, two NXT alumnus, came out, uh, the current uh, women's tag team champions. As uh, Baszler, um, basically, you know, ah, looks like, um, you know, we're on the right side of history. You're on the wrong side of history and whatnot. As Dakota Kai, um, hey, you know, hey, looks, uh, it's uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. It's the sh same Shayna Baszler that ran away from NXT when Rhea Ripley beat her ass. And uh, basically, Raquel Gonzalez said, oh, the same Rhea Ripley that I sent packing and also... This is Shayna Baszler, huh? And Shayna Baszler went on to say, oh, same old Dakota Kai, still running around scared ever since I broke your arm before. But uh, Dakota Kai says, I'm not the same person as before, and this time I'm going to kick your head off this time. Uh, Raquel then basically um, said that I'm running things, we're running things around here right now. As uh, she said, they're going to take the belts off of both Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Nia Jax saying, listen, I'm only here to honor... Uh, Dusty Rhodes because of this tournament. And that Nia Jax was when Dusty Rhodes uh, called her like a beautiful, big, badass bitch and whatnot. And that, um, you know, Dusty was right. She is the biggest and baddest bitch around here. But um, Raquel said, you know, um, God rest Dusty's soul. But Dusty um, never met her and whatnot. And uh, Baszler basically said, in a few weeks, uh, we're going to humiliate both of you guys when we still retain the tag team titles. But Raquel said that, listen, I'm going to take, um, you know, your boot and stick it so far up Nia's hole and whatnot, because we had to get a my hole joke in there, that the boot will go missing. And I'm, I'm sure it's a lot you can fit inside of that hole, okay? So obviously this is a heel versus heel 
um, thing going on, but given this is NXT, it's almost like uh, whoever's on the NXT side is faced by default, according to fans and whatnot. Even like I said, even though I said before, both of these teams are heel versus heel. But as I said, my NXT takeover review is that hey, Dakota Kai can get payback on on Shayna Baszler after what she did to her in the past. So um, that's how you gotta look at it. Of course, we get another Cameron Grimes music video, basically the same one, except he had a car accident this time, and say like, you know what? I can just buy another car. He's rich. He's rich, bitch, so um, there you go. Dave Chappelle joke right there. Uh, to the moon! Uh, huh. Kushida went against Tyler Rust. Good match. Uh, Kushida ended up going for the hoverboard, which um, Malcolm Bivens got on the apron and basically said it's over, that uh, Tyler Rust and me, he just didn't want him to get hurt and that to damage the merchandise, I guess. So um, basically... Um, stopping the match before um, Tyler Russ could even tap out. Kushida, I don't know where he's going now since he's not in the um, North American title picture at this point. I don't know where he really goes on at this point. I'm like, where does he go from here? Because why is he facing Tyler Russ? Like, come on, they've given Kushida all these wins and whatnot. Where is it really going to go on? If he's just been picking up wins, where does it really lead to? you think he would have won a North American title, but that didn't happen. So hopefully this leads to something with uh, Kushida. Um, next story went to Eli Drake. I'm not going to go with that bullshit L.A. Knight name they gave him. Basically, he was in front of his front porch saying that he's the greatest NXT uh, star of all time. He's the hottest free agent. And now that NXT will belong to him. And that is not an insult. That is just a fact of life. Um, before um, they left uh, Eli Drake's house. Uh, next, he got the debut of Zoe Stark. Uh, good debut. Um, what you go against? Uh, Valencia, um, Farash, you went against. Good match. Uh, it was okay. Good debut for, um, Zoe Stark. Don't know much about her. Um, I like that, um, like that GTS or like a whirlwind type of GTS move she did. So, um, not bad. Not bad at all. Good debut. Uh, they then went to a Killer Cross promo with Scarlet, basically talking about, um, Santos that. He has no power now, and he has nowhere to run, and that he's on. It's gonna be a nightmare because you know, a he could show up next week and get his head caved in on TV, or b he doesn't show up, he loses his title, and uh, it's still gonna end up in the same result. Cross will eventually find him, and he'll still kill him. So uh, tick tock, tick tock. Um, huh. Next six man tag though. Um, Finn Balor, O'Reilly, and uh, Strong. O'Reilly headed to the arena. Even doing undisputed air pose. Went against Pete Dunn, Lorcan, and Birch. Six man tag. A good main event. Very good. Um, of course, you were going to see Adam Cole show up at one point, which the referee ended up going down after uh, what the referee uh, had to get the title away from Birch. And then Finn did his shotgun drop kick onto uh, Pete, Pete Dunn. Then basically, um, Balor went for the coup de grace, but. Cole knocked him off the ropes then, and then uh, Cole looked at O'Reilly and uh, uh, him with a big bicycle kick and suplexing him onto some steel steps then. Strong had uh, took out Lord Cannon, and he, uh, tried, I guess he tried to give the belt back to um, Balor and whatnot, but Balor would have hit him with a Pele kick. Balor was confused, and then Pete Dunn came in for the bitter end, getting a win uh, back on uh, Balor from last Sunday. But uh, Cole came from out of nowhere then. He super kicked Finn Balor again. Uh, the referee checked on O'Reilly, saying he needs some help out here. Cole uh, basically looked at Finn Balor, and he held up the title before um, uh, before they went off the air. As the commentator said, he has single-handedly ended an era. So, good episode of NXT tonight. Good main event, uh, especially with you know Cole being involved. Uh, either he's going for um, Balor again for the title, of course, or it's most likely going to be a match between him and O'Reilly. But I did like the whole Undisputed Era drama that's going on right now with Balor. Still kind of wondering who he can trust. Same with O'Reilly, who can he trust right now and whatnot. But I don't know who Balor's next opponent will be. But obviously it's got to be Cole at this point because I don't know who else it would have been. It's not going to be Pete Dunne. He's already faced Pete Dunne. And Cross is going to be the inevitable, but it's not there yet. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, but the rest of the show, though, um, not bad. I don't really know where they got Kushida going, to be honest. Uh, the Gargano stuff was somewhat funny with Theory, uh, you know, appearing. Uh, I guess he's still alive. He's not dead, so um, he survived the kidnapping. Um, the Dusty um, little classic segment they did was good, uh, basically setting up for the Kodakai and um, 
and Raquel Gonzalez to face Jackson Baszler. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, I did like the Rascals, or I'm sorry, MSK, in the corner with Beth Phoenix eating popcorn as they just kind of watch from the, the view and enjoy and, uh, all the drama that's going on, falling all over the ground, laughing. That was actually pretty funny, so that, that wasn't that bad. But um, NXT was good, though, uh, especially with the fallout from this show. Uh, so we'll see what happens next from this. Um, no, we saw Io Shirai, but they showed only just a little clip of her uh, getting attacked by Tony Storm tonight. Uh, that's still going on for the title and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, though, at least we somewhat saw the return of Pat McAfee in a way in that um, little promo video he had, too. Basically saying that Cole was a scumbag the whole time. So that wasn't bad. But other than that, though, um, yeah, I'm done with this review for NXT this week. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, subscribe, Hooded Night 890, of course, you know where to find it, and, um, make sure you check out my NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day review from last Sunday also. So, other than that, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace out.